Good day, everybody. Welcome to the Bible in the year 2021. We are on day 236, and this is Jeremiah chapter 51 to 52. So what we're going to come across is uh, various prophecies um, after all the warnings to the nations. So in, in 51, uh, reading uh, verse 5 to 6, God, the Lord of heavenly forces, hasn't abandoned Israel and Judah, even though they live in a land filled with guilt before the Holy One of Israel. Escape from Babylon. Each of you run for your lives. Don't perish because of your guilt, because this is the time for the Lord's retribution, a day of reckoning for all that Babylon has done. So this is a prophecy of, of what is going to be said in 70 years. This is down the road. This isn't telling them leave Babylon now. This is, they've already been told. See, you have to pay attention to prophecy. They've already been told you're here for 70 years. Settle, marry, um, build a business, uh, do well, uh, prosper the city so you can be prospered. You know, it, it, they've already been told that. So this is what they're being told when you hear this. You, you know, this is a prophecy. When this is announced, go, get out. So it's um, prophecies are important. Uh, it's it's the Lord speaks to us in in this way, uh, but we need to pay attention. <clears throat> now in um, verse seven to eight, a Babylon was a, a gold cup in the Lord's hand. So he, it, it was Babylon was useful. Uh, the Lord, I have no doubt, the Lord raised up Babylon, used Babylon, and then discarded Babylon. So Babylon was a gold cup in the Lord's hand and made the whole earth drunk. The nations drank her wine and went mad. But suddenly Babylon fell and shattered into pieces. Wail for her. Bring medicine for her pain. Perhaps she will recover. Now, remember, this is, this is Jeremiah. The, uh, the, these prophecies are coming through Jeremiah. And he's long gone uh, before Babylon falls. So the, again, he, he's speaking in a voice of, of what is yet to come. On um, verse 9 to 10, everyone is too foolish to understand. Every smith is shamed by his idols, for their images are shams. They aren't alive. Now, this is a repeat of what we had heard, heard in earlier uh, prophecies. They are delusional, a, a charade. Um, at the appointed time, they will be ruined. But the portion of Jacob is utterly different, for he has formed all things, including his very own tribe. The Lord of heavenly forces is his name. So, yeah, Yahweh is not, has not been formed by some blacksmiths or anything. He's, just, he's the one who, who, um, yeah, um, who made them who they are. <clears throat> now, in, in verses 24 to 25 here, we have some reassurances for the Jews. I will repay Babylon and all its inhabitants for the terrible things they have done to Zion in your sight, declares the Lord. I'm against you, your mountain of destruction, declares the Lord. You destroyer of the whole earth. I will reach out against you. I will topple you from your heights. I will turn you into a rubbish heap. Again, these the as these prophecies are shared with the Jews, this this is encouragement. It, it is encouraging for them to hear that the Lord is occupied with them. It's like what happened in, in Egypt. And that's what he said. He he said that no longer would they talk about their rescue out of Egypt, um, that their 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 history going forward now would talk about the day that he rescued them out of Babylon. In verse 61 to 64, we have more encouragement. Uh, Jeremiah, um, now he's, he's about to dispatch um, somebody under him. So Jeremiah said to Sariah, uh, when you get to Babylon, see to it that you read all these words. Then say, Lord, you declare that this place will be destroyed and nothing will remain in it, neither human nor animal, that it will forever be a wasteland. When you finish reading the scroll, tie a stone to it and throw it into the Euphrates River. Then say, in the same way, Babylon will sink and never rise again because of the disaster I'm bringing against it. So there is always that dramatic flair uh, with, with the prophets uh, to drive that point home. 
And in chapter 52, verse three, uh, it, everything's been arranged. It, it was because the Lord was angry against Jerusalem and Judah that he thrust them out of his presence. Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. So we, we need to take from this and understand Zedekiah uh, didn't uh, rebel on his own. And, and understand that everything, everything that we read in the word, people had choices. It's just that the Lord knew how they would respond to such certain situations. And, and so he knew that, that um, Zedekiah, um, you know, he had a rebellious heart and there's no way that he would continue under uh, Babylon. Uh, and, and so <clears throat> all these plans were laid. He, he just knew exactly what was going to happen. And, and this is how he uses governments. It's not every government that he raises up that's a good government, but uh, each government is going to move his plan forward. And yeah, so that's the place. That's what we call faith. That's what we call trust. Do you trust the Lord? When he raises up a government that you don't agree with, do you trust him that he is still moving his agenda forward? Um. <clears throat> And, and just here, just try to grasp the complete destruction, the utter destruction of Jerusalem, where nothing is left. Verses 13 to 14, he burned down the Lord's temple, the royal palace, all the houses of Jerusalem, all the important buildings, the entire Babylonian army, and the commander of the guard destroyed the walls surrounding Jerusalem. Everything destroyed. Um, and understand that there are so many who were killed. Uh, we're going to look at some um, verses uh, tomorrow um, that, that will give you a better idea of what numbers we're talking about. But there are, there are so many who are dead. Um, Zeb, Zebuzaradan, commander of the guard, deported some of the poorest people. The rest of the people left in the city, a few skilled workers and those who had joined the king of Babylon. But Nebuzaradan, commander of the guard left some of the poor to tend the vineyards and, and till the land. And, and understand they took everything. They just stripped the city. <clears throat> Nothing left at all. The Babylonians broke apart the bronze columns, the stands, the bronze sea in the Lord's temple. They carried the bronze to Babylon. They took the, the pots, the shovels, the wick trimmers, the sprinkling bowls, the incense dishes, and all the bronze equipment used for the temple services. The commander of the guard took whatever gold or silver he could find as well. The small bowls, the fire pans, the sprinkling bowls, the pots, the lampstands, the basins, and the offering bowls. Now, this may look terrible, but um, they didn't, they didn't, uh, they, they, they understood that these things were, were holy things. And, and uh, they were religious and superstitious. And, and they didn't melt these things down. They, they stored them away so that when when Israel's released in 70 years, all of this equipment has been preserved and it's given back to them to take to the temple that, that Sirius once um, uh, has been told by the Lord needs to be built. So yeah, that's, I mean, it looks harsh, but it's also good. And in verse 24 to 27, uh, this is just absolutely brutal. And, and this is how it was. And it's hard to read. Um, but this, this is just, they brought this on themselves. The commander of the guard also took Syria, the high priest, Zephaniah, the deputy priest, and the three doorkeepers. Now, remember, these priests were, were not priests of, of Yahweh. Uh, they may have been in the temple, but uh, they, had, they had set up all kinds of different shrines to different, different gods. Um, you know, it's kind of like what they've done with the military chaplains now in Canada. You can't, they, they don't want to have all kinds of different chaplains for different religions. So they make uh, each chaplain, um, they, they, they have to take studies so that they can be a chaplain. Um, it, you know, you can have one chaplain who is a chaplain for the, for, for the Jew, as well as the Muslim, as well as the Christian, as well as the Hindu. Like, it's crazy. It, it's crazy. You, you can't do that. It's uh, why they think they can do that. I don't know, but that's, and, and so that's what you have here is that these priests that they're talking about were, were, were the priests of many gods. So from the city, he took a, a eunuch who was appointed over the army 
and the seven royal advisors who remained in the city. He also took the scribe of the commander of the army in charge of military conscription and 60 military personnel who were found in the city. Zebuzaradan, the commander of the guard, took them and brought them to the king of Babylon at Ribla. Uh, the king of Babylon struck them and put them to death at Ribla in the land of Hamath, and Judah went away from its land into exile. So that's kind of uh, point final there. It's, uh, it's done. And okay, so yeah, I've Sorry, I thought this was for tomorrow, but this is today. So this will give you a better idea of how many were killed um, in verses 28 to 30. This is the number of people for, uh, whom um, Zebuch Nebuchadnezzar, sorry, Nebuchadnezzar deported uh, in the seventh year, 3,023 Judeans. Okay, so that's, that's the first deportation. That's the first number that they took and, and deported. Uh, in the 18th year, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, he took 832 people from Jerusalem. Uh, so that was the, the, the second wave of deportation. In the 23rd year of Nebuchadnezzar, um, this is when they totally destroyed Jerusalem, he dispatched uh, Nebuchadnezzar, commander of the guard, who deported 745 Judeans. Altogether, 4,600 were taken captive. Then they left a, a, a small sprinkling of people behind, but everybody else was killed. Keep in mind, we've read the scripture where Judah at one point uh, under one of the great kings uh, had a million people, a million men in its army. And, and Judah was very small compared to Israel. So like, this is it. Out of millions of people, there's only 4,600 were taken captive. Now, of course, there are, there are some who ran away, some who escaped uh, in, into other places, because um, the scripture talks about they, they were scattered everywhere. Uh, but let, let's, say, um, let's say 10 times this amount then was, was in hiding. Okay, you're still talking less than 50,000 people out of millions. Wow, when the Lord said he was going to reduce them, he wasn't kidding. And uh, that's, uh, that's something just to think about there. Um, yeah, because that kind of brings it home. Okay, so you guys be blessed today, be encouraged, draw into the Lord, discover um, the revelations of this stuff, discover the, uh, the things that, that uh, you need in your life, uh, what helps you better understand our, our Father, what will draw you into him and keep you connected uh, forever in the good and in the bad and staying faithful to him at all times. So we will pick this up again tomorrow and uh, thanks for being here. God bless.